Welcome to the Alaska Weather Show. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan. On this Thursday, August 19th, 2021. And as always, if you would like additional weather information, you can go to weather.gov forward slash Alaska and find all sorts of additional weather information there. Or just weather.gov and that'll give you a map of the entire United States and the territories allowing you the opportunity to maybe check up on some family or friends where they live and what the weather's like there, including any particular watches, warnings, or advisories. And as always, if you have any questions, uh, suggestions, or would like to share an image or a special observation, you can reach me at peter.chan at noaa.gov. All in the weather headlines uh, for this Thursday afternoon evening. Uh, low pressure trough continues to work its way through the central interior. It's moving on shore now. They are in Norton Sound, the south coast of the Seward Peninsula, and it will gradually weaken as it does move inland during the day on Friday, but it will be bringing some lower cloudiness, areas of rain or rain showers. Higher elevations will be picking up some snow or a mix of precipitation. And as that system uh, works its way uh, down through the, the lower portion of the state, the, expect some gale force west winds cooking, especially between Homer and Kodiak. And then on the back side of it, uh, we'll see winds turning around to the southwest uh, later uh, sat or Friday night into Saturday and staying up over the course of the weekend. So the surf is expected to run a foot or two above normal high tide along the northwest coast uh, this weekend. And we have coming up early Sunday morning, just after 4 a.m., the full sturgeon moon of uh, August. And that's based on uh, native tradition of the people of the Great Lakes or Northeast. Uh, I'm curious to know, uh, at least in the uh, Alaska tradition, what is uh, the name of the full moon associated with uh, the end of summer? Well, another thing we have to look forward to is now that we're starting to see growing darkness. The nights are starting to get longer again. It'll be an opportunity to view uh, the northern lights or the aurora. Now, the only thing we're waiting on, a couple of things, uh, at least to have a reach uh, full moon because the, the brighter moonlight has a tendency to wash out the aurora unless it's a really immense display and then we're also waiting on an increase in solar activity there is a filament on the sun right now that could potentially snap and provide some energy that might send some charged particles our way to generate the uh, northern lights but uh, in the meantime just know that as we're getting uh, the uh, lengthening night time we're going to have a better chance now of seeing the aurora especially as we head into september well on the weather maps uh, we continue to see uh, the system moving on shore, you can see the curl in the clouds kind of around Nome and Norton Sound. Uh, that is the uh, low pressure system that's working its way right along the uh, southern coast there, the Seward Peninsula, crossing through Norton Sound. And you see the plume of moisture out ahead of it, lifting up from the uh, southwest part of the state, east of St. Paul, up through Bethel, and all the way uh, northwest of Anchorage to Fairbanks. And this is going to spread uh, mainly rain lighter rains into through portions of uh, much of the interior, uh, especially north and south of the uh, Alaska range. And in the higher elevations will, uh, as usual, pick up some snow or a mix of precipitation. Otherwise, uh, back out across uh, the, the panhandle, there's still some lingering cloudiness, though the south end has seen a few breaks. Uh, still a few lingering light, widely scattered showers, and that'll be the case. Uh, but Friday afternoon should see some breaks again across the southern portion of the panhandle which will allow for a smidgen of sun and maybe temperatures back up 65 to near 70 at Ketchikan. Uh, and uh, even warmer weather, uh, some areas could break 70. Sunday afternoon is looking to be pretty good there across the southern part of the panhandle. Meanwhile, though, we're watching the system now that's currently working through the western and pushing into the central part of the state. That will be moving through the interior, uh, both the central and south central areas on Friday. Here's the weather map as it stands now. You can see that low uh, working its way along uh, in approaching Norton Sound. A weak high pressure is behind that back through the central bearing and that high will eventually move eastward into the southwest interior uh, later on Friday and into Saturday. There is a low that is south 
of the central Aleutians, and as that lifts northeastward, that's going to fling a frontal system through the uh, central and eastern Aleutians and gradually weaken, but it'll also bring some rain and uh, lower cloudiness and fog with it. So overnight, we expect that low to continue to work its way eastward inland with a trough extending uh, southward from that. And once that trough passes, we're going to see west winds pick up there in the lower half of Cook Inlet, where there will be those gale force westerly winds uh, develop on Friday, especially there between Homer and Kodiak. So keep that in mind because that's a pretty active uh, boating area given this time of year. And weak high pressure there up in the north end of the uh, panhandle as well as out over uh, approaching the southwest coast with that low uh, south still of the central Aleutians. During the day on Friday, weak low pressure, the remnants of that trough as it continues to work further eastward to uh, be situated around Prince William Sound with some areas of light rain. Again, up in the mountains, there could be a light mix of precipitation. Very slight chance there could be an isolated rumble of thunder in the Talkeetna Mountains, a little bit of instability there, but nothing substantial, not like uh, as what we were having earlier in the summer. And then that high pressure area over the southwest will spread eastward and affect more along and south of the Alaska Range as we head through the weekend Saturday into Sunday. will tend to dry out along the Alaska Range. That'll be not too bad of a period as that system works its way through the eastern Aleutians up into the uh, Alaska Peninsula start to see some rain from that weakening low that uh, lifts northeastward up there along the southwest. Otherwise, low temperatures for Friday morning will be uh, in the lower 50s across the uh, panhandle. And then across south central areas, upper 40s to low 50s. And uh, then during the day on Friday, again, the southern part of the panhandle, uh, as we get around uh, uh, Ketchikan there, could see highs uh, mid 60s to a few spots near 70. Uh, back up uh, through uh, the interior, though, of south central areas, it'll be cooler with highs generally uh, anywhere from upper 40s to about mid 50s, though. Still some readings near 60, such as at Anchorage or, say, Soldatna down toward Kodiak. And then for Saturday morning lows, lower 50s generally in the inner waterways of the panhandle and then back out through uh, the interior of the south central areas. There could be some partial clearing in a few spots maybe a little patchy fog, uh, western arm of the Alaska Range. And uh, temperatures on Saturday afternoon will generally be in the lower 60s across the uh, southeast panhandle and anywhere from upper 50s to lower 60s uh, south central areas. Along the Arctic coast, lows in the 30s, uh, also up into the Brooks Range, north slope areas. Otherwise, lows generally in the 40s, Yukon Valley and back through the Seward Peninsula. And then on Friday afternoon, Temperatures along the uh, north slope and uh, in through the Arctic coast, upper 40s to middle 50s. And that's going to be pretty common readings throughout much of the region, including the Yukon Valley, where there will be more in the way of some cloud cover and lighter precipitation. And then back through the Seward uh, Peninsula, uh, the precipitation will begin to be letting up from west to east uh, later in the day on Friday and certainly as we head into Saturday. Saturday morning lows will generally be in the upper 30s to near 40 degrees along the Arctic coast. Uh, mid upper 30s there in the Brooks Range and then generally uh, lower mid 40s Yukon Valley back through the Seward Peninsula and temperatures still for Saturday uh, common again in the 40s along the north slope some a few 50s uh, popping up there but uh, generally up through the Yukon Valley temperatures a couple few degrees warmer maybe uh, 50s to near 60 there at Fort Yukon and generally uh, upper 40s to near 50 back across the Seward Peninsula and then the southwest portion of the state Lows tonight will be uh, in the lower to mid 40s with uh, cloud cover and uh, periods of mainly light rain. Uh, temperatures uh, will be a tad warmer, maybe around 50 down along the length of the Alaska Peninsula into the eastern Aleutians. Friday afternoon, look for temperatures staying though on the cooler side. Uh, most areas only in the uh, lower 50s for highs, though it could get up to about 59 King Salmon, uh, Dillingham. And then uh, as we extend down along the length of the uh, Alaska Peninsula could see some readings upper 50s to near 60 degrees mid mid 50s out across the central and western Aleutians and then low Saturday morning will generally be uh, lower 40s across the southwest interior mid 40s along the southwest coast lower 50s uh, from the uh, southern uh, portion southwest portion of the uh, Alaska Peninsula back out through uh, the Aleutian chain and high temperatures Saturday afternoon will generally be a few degrees warmer back up into the 50s a few spots up near 60 again 
and generally mid 50s in through the Aleutians. Temperatures though are expected to average below normal August 25th through the 29th across the northwestern half of the state centered on the Seward Peninsula and Norton Sound. And then precipitation still looking like it could average a bit above normal in the northwest but uh, a little drier than normal conditions across the southern half of the state especially the Alaska Peninsula. So there you have it for the uh, upcoming weekend. Hope you have a chance uh, where it does uh, tend to dry out to enjoy some weather then. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on to aviation weather. If you do have a flight planned for Friday or Saturday, uh, we are looking at uh, one primary feature, a trough working its way uh, eastward across central, south central areas of the state uh, Friday into Saturday bringing areas of rain or rain showers and lower elevations and then snow or mixed precipitation up in the mountains. Still though, some areas of IFR along uh, parts of the southeast panhandle and out over the Gulf uh, and then extending back west uh, into the Bering and around the central Lucians and the tip of the Alaska Peninsula. Friday afternoon, widespread MVFR conditions expected in the Yukon Valley and along and north of the Alaska Range as well as slight chance of an isolated thunderstorm popping up in the afternoon uh, up through uh, Oh, the northern Chugach as well as the Talkeetna Mountains and south of the Alaska Range. Uh, as we go into Saturday morning, still some pockets of IFR along uh, the Alaska Range toward the Elkan border and also the inner waterways of the Panhandle. And then up along the northwest coast, there will be a weakening cold front approaching the northwest coast from uh, the Chukchi Sea as we go through uh, Saturday afternoon. And then back out toward the west Saturday afternoon, look for rather extensive uh, IFR conditions across the Bering in through uh, the central and eastern Aleutians with some improving conditions uh, across south central areas into the uh, interior as well as along uh, portions of the panhandle there along the uh, Gulf Coast. So past conditions on Friday will be IFR to start early in the day, uh, becoming MVFR at Anatuvik. Also the same thing, IFR becoming MVFR later morning and afternoon at Attigan. Uh, southwest there at Lake Clark and Merrill, we'll see IFR conditions in the early morning become MVFR as we progress through the late morning and afternoon. And Rainy Pass, the same thing, IFR becoming MVFR as will be the case at Windy. And Isabel should generally have MVFR conditions overall, but early morning the south entrance could see IFR conditions with a slight chance of an isolated uh, thunderstorm popping up uh, south of the south entrance in the afternoon. Mentasta will generally hold on to VFR conditions early, then become MVFR as that moisture spreads further east with the trough. And uh, Tanita should see uh, generally IFR conditions in the early morning become MVFR with a slight chance of an uh, isolated uh, thunderstorm developing in the afternoon. For uh, Portage Pass, it's going to be kind of a mix. The east entrance, IFR becoming MVFR, and then the west entrance, MVFR in the uh, early morning becoming VFR uh, going through the, the afternoon. Chilkoot and White will start off IFR and then becoming MVFR later morning and afternoon. Freezing levels are lowest across the north and uh, southwest part of the state with a little pocket of near and below 4,000 foot freezing levels. Uh, YK Delta in the southwest. We see freezing levels uh, 10 to 11,000 feet across the panhandle and then uh, generally above 10,000 feet extending out the tip of the Alaska Peninsula in through the central Aleutians. Best chance for some icing, some moderate icing there across uh, central and uh, east central areas of the state along either side of the Alaska Range, 8,000 to a flight level of 18,000 feet, tapering off to uh, 6,000 to 12,000 feet there across uh, the lower Yukon uh, Basin back through the Seward Peninsula. Upper level jet stream winds, a core of northwesterly 120 knot winds just off of the Kenai in the northern Gulf and extending across much of the southwest, west central areas of the state, anywhere from 70 to near 100 knot northwesterly winds. As we uh, drop down to 9,000 feet, uh, we see winds in the 35 to 40 knot range across much of the southwest from the northwest. And then low pressure south of the central Aleutians will spread south southerly winds uh, upwards to 35 to 45 knots at mid-levels uh, up in through the eastern Aleutians. And then dropping down to 3,000 feet, we do have a weak uh, area of high pressure, high pressure ridge showing up around Nunavik Island in the southwest coast with on the back or front side of that northwesterly winds th up to 35 knots, especially just west of the Alaska Range and then uh, between uh, Kodiak Island and the Kenai. 
And then looking further south and west uh, across the eastern Aleutians, uh, winds upwards of 35 to 40 knots from the south, southwest ahead of that uh, area of low pressure. And that will lend towards some turbulence across uh, areas of the, uh, the Alaska Range back down through uh, the southwest portion of the state between the surface and 6,000 feet, as well as extending out uh, from the tip of the Alaska Peninsula to the central Aleutians. There could be some turbulence between the surface and 4,000 feet. So there's your flight uh, weather. If you are heading out this weekend, please have a safe flight. Hello celestial viewers, this week we'll see a beautiful full blue moon and even though you see me standing alone, in reality the moon is just a normal color. We just made it blue for TV. So why do we call it blue? The term blue moon has two definitions. Today it means the second full moon in a calendar month, but historically it meant the third of four full moons in a single season. Both definitions are used today, and this is the latter, a seasonal blue moon. Without getting too technical, this happens because celestial orbits, they don't perfectly align. So we have 13 full moons between the 2020 and 21 December solstices. Hit the darkness around 9.30 p.m. for moonrise, and you'll see the moon chasing Jupiter across the southeastern sky. It may look the same, but it should feel different because we won't see another seasonal blue moon until 2048. Keep looking up. been to the beach and noticed litter like plastic bottles or foam takeout containers on the sand? Or maybe you've been to a river or bay where there's a bag or a car tire stuck in the mud on the shore or a bunch of deflated balloons that say happy birthday floating in the water? All of that junk in the water or on the shoreline is considered marine debris. It's anything solid and man-made in the ocean or Great Lakes that is not supposed to be there. And anything people use every day can become marine debris if they don't dispose of it properly. And I mean anything. The most common items we find when we do shoreline cleanups are plastics. But we also find rubber, cloth, glass, metal, and paper litter. Sometimes the debris is so tiny, like a plastic microbead from your face wash, that you can barely see it in the water. Marine debris is more than just trash in the ocean. Sometimes fishers lose their gear like fishing traps, nets, or fishing line, and it continues to drift through the water, catching animals for a long time. We call that derelict fishing gear, and it's marine debris. Have you ever seen an old boat left behind on a shoreline? Abandoned and derelict vessels are also marine debris. So let's review. Anything we use every day can become marine debris if we don't dispose of it properly or if it goes into the water by accident. Marine debris can be very small or can be very big and anything in between. But most importantly, marine debris is one of the biggest pollution problems facing the world's oceans and waterways today. How does marine debris impact the ocean, animals, and me? Would you want to swim in a beach littered with trash? Of course not. And the animals who live in the ocean don't either. The difference is, they don't have a choice. Marine species often get tangled in debris, from fishing nets to six-pack rings. If they get caught, they could get injured or even die. And even if they don't get entangled, many animals mistake plastic debris for food and eat it. This fills their stomach with junk they can't digest. Debris can also damage important habitats, like coral reefs, by breaking or smothering them. Corals serve as the base of the marine ecosystem, and impacts here can be felt all the way to you and me. Plus, plastics have harmful chemicals in them. Fishy plastic, we eat fish. The question is, can those chemicals harm us? Marine debris also hurts the economy. It costs a lot of money to clean up, 
and people don't want to go to dirty beaches. Boats and ships could run into large pieces of debris too, or get their propellers tangled. We need the ocean and everything in it, and the ocean needs us to keep it free of debris. about marine debris. A lot of the trash that's in our ocean is plastic. And that marine debris is hurting our environment, economy, and health. The problem will only get worse. Unless we change the way we consume and dispose of products. There are solutions. And together, we can prevent litter from ending up in the ocean. Some people might say, well, I'm just one person, so I can't make a difference. But that's just not true. If each person who creates trash, and that's just about everyone, took action, it would add up to a whole lot of change. So what can we do? Well, the ultimate solution is prevention. And we need to keep that as our highest priority. We can reduce, reuse, and recycle to keep debris out of the ocean in the first place. You can bring your own shopping bag, drink out of a reusable bottle, and participate in things like a shoreline cleanup. Join a group cleaning up the beach or grab some friends and clean up your street. It's easy. Be more conscious of how many disposable plastic items you're using. And if you do, where are you putting it? In the trash can? Whoops. Or in the recycling bin? So here's the challenge. The next time you finish using a throwaway item, a bag, a bottle, or utensil, answer the question, where is this going? Because ultimately, when you throw stuff away, there really is no away. It has to go somewhere. So keep asking yourself this important question. How will you keep your trash from becoming marine debris? And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back, and it's time for marine weather. As we look at the sea ice edge, plenty of open water across the Chukchi Sea along the northwest coast as you get north of the Bering Strait. Still, though, some ice lingering along uh, the Arctic coast there, but uh, we're not expecting uh, too much in the way of some movement, though, coming up as we do have uh, a front approaching from the northwest. Winds will be southwesterly on Friday, turning more westerly as we head into Saturday. And so that could cause a little uh, ice movement there of what remains along the Arctic coast. Otherwise, the southeast panhandle have somewhat variable winds across the inner waterways. Northwest, uh, 15 knot winds, three foot waves around Ketchikan. More variable winds, five, 10 knots, waves a foot or two, Petersburg and in Lynn Canal. Southeast winds to 20 knots, waves three to four feet. Along the uh, Gulf Coast, uh, we're looking at uh, the southern half, uh, northwest winds 20 knots, waves 7 feet, and the northern half uh, winds 10 to 15 knots from the west and waves generally around 6 feet. For Saturday, variable winds across the inner water waves, 5 to 10 knots, waves a foot or two, and then along uh, the coast, uh, we're looking at northwest winds 15 to 20 knots and waves 7 to as high as 9 to 10 feet south of Sitka through Craig. Now, on Friday, south central areas will see some stronger winds. Westerly gale force winds are expected to develop mouth of Cook Inlet on up to uh, between uh, Kodiak Island and the Kenai uh, with waves of 9 to 13 feet. And then lesser winds as you get on up toward Prince William Sound, maybe 10 to 15 knots, waves only uh, 2, 3 feet. And then in the north end of Cook Inlet up toward uh, just north of the Kenai, southwest winds 25 knots and waves 8 feet. Winds will come down on Saturday, uh, northwest 20 knots in Prince William Sound with waves 2-3 feet. And then uh, generally a northeast to north wind down the length of Cook Inlet, but then westerly 25 knots uh, with 7-foot waves at the mouth of Cook Inlet to off of uh, Kodiak and off the south end of the Kenai. For the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island, winds will generally be out of the west of 15 to 25 knots, waves around 6 feet surrounding Kodiak Island. But turning more southeast to easterly as you get out uh, past uh, Perryville and Chicknick, uh, we're looking at waves four feet either side there the, uh, the, of the Gulf or on the uh, Bering side. And then 
during the day Saturday winds will be south southwest across uh, Kodiak Island at 15 knots waves three to four feet but more southeasterly there across the tip of the Alaska Peninsula upwards to 25 knots and waves six feet on the North Pacific side four feet on the Bering side low pressure will be centered Friday south of the central Aleutian so east to northeast winds up to 30 knots will be out ahead of that and waves generally seven to ten feet on the Pacific side five to seven feet on the Bering side and then for Saturday winds will be coming down as that low lifts northeastward and weakens south winds uh, the eastern Aleutians uh, 15 to 20 knots waves six to eight feet on the North Pacific side four to five feet on the Bering side and winds will turn more to the northwest and then west as you get west of ADAC on Saturday with waves of six feet across the west coast Winds are going to turn westerly as the occluded front and low pressure move inland. So look for westerly winds 20 to as high as 30 knots entering Norton Sound and uh, waves anywhere from about 5 to 9 feet. It'll be uh, less in the way. Winds and waves will be uh, a bit lighter as you get down towards St. Paul and St. George with waves around 4 to 5 feet. For Saturday, a little bit more uh, winds turn more out of the east ahead of that weakening low around St. Paul and St. George. Southeast to east winds 20 to as high as 30 knots. There, uh, west of uh, Bristol Bay and south of Nunavik Island, waves uh, five to eight feet. And then as we get up the, the coast there, winds uh, southwesterly into Norton Sound around 10 knots and waves three feet. Along uh, the Arctic coast, the northwest coast, winds will be uh, 15 to 20 knots on Friday. Locally higher along the northwest coast from the southwest with waves uh, four to six feet in the lower Chuck GC. And then generally uh, south to southwest winds there across the Arctic coast and waves at two to four feet. And then on Saturday, as that weakening cold front uh, passes through, winds will turn west more westerly along the northwest coast to 20 knots with waves of five to seven feet. And south-southwest ahead of that there, Prudhoe Bay eastward and waves five to six feet. And a quick check of the weather maps. The low pressure will move inland there east of the Seward Peninsula with a weakening trough. Uh, and as we go through the day on Friday, just a little reflection of a low there toward Prince William Sound with some stronger winds on the backside through uh, the lower end of Cook Inlet and between the Kenai and Kodiak Island. So that does it for our show on this Thursday evening. Thank you for watching and be sure to join us again tomorrow night. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.